So I did something that I don't normally do. Even though we did not need this curriculum and I won't need it for several years, I bought it anyway just so I could answer questions that I'm getting here on YouTube and in my Facebook group. So that might mean I've officially lost it, but it's all to your benefit. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Mandy, the Handmade Homeschooler, and today is, I'm really just gonna be answering a question because I keep getting the same question over and over and over again about Generations History Curriculum. Now I'm specifically talking about the World History Curriculum. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button because the more you guys watch my videos, the more I can do crazy things like purchase curriculum that I don't need so I can answer questions on YouTube. Okay, so I don't work for Generations. I work with Generations as an affiliate and partner, but that's only because I use their stuff so much. So, and I like just bringing you guys good resources, good books. I like reviewing them. I'm kind of known as the curriculum review girl and we're going to take a look at the history curriculum from generations specifically the world history set for ninth grade so this is a set of three books so this is i think what they call the history of the world set so this is the teacher and student workbook so all of your tests your questions worksheets things like that a schedule all in here okay and then you have two textbooks so it looks like this is split and this is okay so this one will be first this is preparing the world for jesus and taking the world for jesus now i cannot do a full in-depth review because i have a rule about reviews if i'm going to do an in-depth review i'm going to use it first <laughs> so during the last generation sale when all the curriculum was on sale i went ahead and purchased it and i figure to get my money's worth, I'll just put it on my shelf for later. I, yes, I actually purchased these just to answer this question, but I spent last night going through these books to answer the million dollar question. So the question, so the question that people keep asking me is, is this set Bible history or world history? I'm gonna answer that, I have the answer. Okay, so I went through the textbooks, I went through the workbook, and this is my answer. It's both, it is both. And I think that it's combined into two books to kind of pack in all of that, but here is a really good way to know, okay? When you're going through books, look at the workbook samples, okay? because the questions that they ask in these workbook samples are going to be questions that sum up the reading. So in order to give you a break so you don't have to read the textbooks in full, grab the teacher and the textbook, or grab the teacher student workbook. And here's a good way to take a look at this. Okay, so Let's just turn to some pages here. And I also wanna say, after going through this, this is not just church history, this is not just Bible history, this is not just world history, but you're also getting geography too. There are map exercises and things like this to inside, so that this is a partial geography class as well. So just to add that in there, I did not want to forget to add that. All right, so here is one of the maps so you can see Sorry, the sun, I know the glare, I apologize. So I just opened up to chapter eight. What are the largest civilizations or nations of the world found today? Number two, what were the first major rivers around which civilizations were established? List the first civilization that grew up around the rivers. Number three, how did the first civilizations in India demonstrate technological innovation and expertise? Number four, what causes civilizations to disappear? 
Number five, from what three people groups did the nation of India develop? Number six, what do we know about the Hindu gods? Okay, so obviously that's a lesson on India. Just understand, this is not just Bible history. This is not just a Bible course. This is a world history course. But you can't tell the history of the world without Christianity. So it is woven through here. Christ is going to be that central red cord through these books. Okay, and this is for all generations. Christ is always that central cord running through everything. Everything is going to go back to that, but that doesn't mean you don't learn other things. And people ask me that a lot about the taking, um, the taking for Jesus, the taking nations for Jesus series. It's the same thing. Christ is that central part of the entire curriculum, but that doesn't mean we don't learn about the bubonic plague. So everything's age appropriate, of course, but it all leads back. Okay, so I want you to understand that when you're going through these books, because I think people have the wrong idea that the, these are just like church history books or these are just Bible history books. It's absolutely untrue. These are full history curriculums, but it's history and Christianity because you can't have one without the other. Christ literally split time. So, you know, I, I, there's even a book by Todd Friel called The Man Who Split Time. It's a, um, it's a track and it's really good. If you haven't read it, you should read that one. But that, uh, that point, I, I never realized that point until I heard Todd Friel talking about it on Wretched. I'm a Wretched Radio listener, okay? So they really you like hammered in that point that Christ literally split time in half. Like the whole reason that we have our date that we write on the calendar every day with the year is because Christ split time. So you can't tell the history of the world without telling the history of Christ. So it's all in here, it's all packed in here. And the whole credit system and everything as far as like how many credits this is for high school is going to be on the Generations website. Highly recommend you check it out. They've been having some fantastic sales lately. I know the sale is over right now. I think it actually ended today. But I did want to get this video up because we've had so many questions. And because I haven't used this one, I don't have a ninth grader. We did World History with Knockgrass last year because I did not know about Generations. So because of that, we kind of missed out on this World History course. But luckily, I still have a sixth grader who can go through the class, you know, if need be. So I'm going to save these and we're just going to put them on the shelf for a little while. They are fantastic looking books, wonderful pictures. So you're going to get the history of Christ. You're going to get the history of the world and you're going to get a geography class. So it, my answer is it's both. It's history, it's Christian history and it's world history together. So. I hope that answers your question well. I hope that this was helpful. And I will leave the link to this curriculum down below in my description box. All right, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy homeschooling.